Hello, and thank you for participating in our online annual discipline specific activity. For those of you that I've not met, I'm Kaylee Malsey, the Associate Dean of School Partnerships here at Penn Highlands Community College. While I have communicated with all of you in some form or another, it is my pleasure to work with each one of you. As many of you know, we typically hold an in-person event each fall, allowing you to work face-to-face -face with the college faculty and our college faculty liaisons to talk about many topics, including course content, delivery methods, assessment, or research and development in the field. This event is a requirement of our NACEP accreditation. While it saddens us that this year we were unable to hold an in-person event due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our liaisons have worked hard to provide an opportunity for us to still meet the requirements in some face-to-face -face format. In the fall, faculty liaisons held live Zoom meetings with ACE faculty. We understand that not everybody was able to attend these meetings at the specific time, but the meetings were all recorded and have been uploaded for you to complete and view at your leisure. Supporting documents from all of these meetings are also included on the training pages. We appreciate your time in completing the annual discipline specific activity. There is a short survey that we are asking you to complete once you have completed the training. If you have any questions regarding this training or other requirements, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You can email me at kmalsey at penhighlands.edu or give me a call at 814-262-3859. Thank you again for your dedication to the students and your participation in the ACE program. Thank you. Getting to know me a little is on the agenda, the COVID-19 challenges, which we were chatting about as we led up to this. Um, the course content and delivery overall, I really want to take a couple minutes to go over the My Peak Ace pages with you guys and show you what all is there for you in terms of resources in your classes and the expectations with regard to the content that you're covering and the learning objectives and things of that nature. Talk a little bit about assessment and how we gather it, how we store it, how we use it, all of that good stuff. And then just any questions that you guys have for me that I can potentially help you to address, um, send them my way anytime, not just today during the meeting, but you can always reach out to me with any questions. So I'm just gonna close that and go into my actual little presentation here. My button will work. So as you guys know, I'm Melissa Boback. So I am the program coordinator for the accounting program here at Pennsylvania Highlands. And I am also an assistant professor of accounting here. In fact, I'm the only full-time accounting professor here. So I teach primarily accounting, but I am in close contact with all the business faculty. So Joe Slifko, Sandy Shrum are our other two full-time business faculty here at the college. And so they provide me with a lot of the information that I need to share with you guys with regard to the business classes. So. If there is anything on the business my peak pages, and I'll stress this later as well, that doesn't give you enough detail or that you feel you could use additional support in a specific area in those classes, please let me know. I can touch base with them. I can get that information for you. And um, I had to do that a couple times this semester. And it, and you know, I actually put that out there on the ACE page for people. So sometimes when you ask a question, it helps other people to see that information as well. I usually tell my students and I tell everybody, if you have the question, someone else probably has the question too. So if you ask, you know, and I answer and I provide that information for everyone, it can only help to improve your experience as an ACE faculty member. My email address is on here for you. And so is my phone number at my office. The awesome thing about my office phone now is that you can text it. So we got this new system mm -hmm. called Ring Central, which I love because my students hate talking on the phone <laughs> and love text messaging. So now um, if I know that they have a cell phone instead of a house phone, which is like 90% of my students now, I can shoot them a text and I almost always get a response. Whereas if I leave a voicemail, I usually get ignored. Awesome. <laughs> so it's, it's been an awesome, awesome thing to be able to text message my students 
students and for them to be able to text message me too. I think it makes them feel a little more connected, um, but it's great for everybody really, you know, so you can always text me too. Just tell me who you are and what you need and you could, or you can send me an email or you can call whatever works best for you. And I even have it set up. It's an app on my phone. It rings through to my cell phone. So that's a nice feature of the system as well. So it's been pretty cool to have that. And that's been like a really big improvement to our phone system here at the college. But again, you can ask me anything, anytime. Like I said, I wanted to just kind of lead off uh, with COVID-19 challenges and just talk a little bit about that. We were just discussing the internet connectivity issue, uh, in which many, many of our schools and their student populations are facing and their faculty members are even facing, as you said. So it is definitely a continual challenge you know, especially for our ACE faculty, because we are trying to obviously continue to hold those standards of meeting the same learning objectives that your these students would be meeting if they were attending college at Pennsylvania Highlands. So the, the critical thing is to make sure that you're still meeting those learning objectives, even if you're trying to do so remotely or virtually or completely online, if that be the case. And I know that does present interesting circumstances. So if ever you feel you need additional support in that area or additional materials in any of those areas, please don't hesitate to reach out to get them and we will try to help you as much as possible where that's concerned. Do either of you have any questions on how to keep pace during COVID or um, anything that you think you know, comes to mind with regard to that at this point? To this point, we've really been in good shape. We've been uh, we've been in school and doing in-person instruction, uh, with the exception of just a, a couple of, of days here and there, uh, this week and and next week, which are shortened uh, right. because of the the holiday. We're we're going virtual, but other than that, we've been good. So it hasn't that piece of it hasn't been much of an issue. Great, that's excellent to hear, Robin. How about you guys? Are you doing okay? Yeah, I think we are. I mean, we just went virtual today until December 7th, but okay. we've been hybrid and off and on. Yeah, and so, out. you know, I think it's becoming a little, you know, everybody's getting used to it as opposed to spring when everybody was sort of thrust into it. No yeah, question. True. Yeah, so, I mean, it's kind of becoming old hat, sadly. It's kind of a sad situation, but but at least I think the students are starting to adapt a little bit, faculty starting to adapt a little bit. Um, and we're just all kind of getting in this ever-changing mentality of, of, you know, today we're here, but tomorrow we might be online and we may have to pivot to hybrid or <laughs> whatever we have to do, you know, uh, from the powers that be, depending yeah, on COVID. Bring all your stuff home every night. <laughs> yes, that, that is always a good tip to bring your stuff home every night. I have been in the habit for years of keeping everything in the cloud because I teach video conference for a lot of my classes and I travel between the sites in normal circumstances. Mm -hmm. So we have laptops now thanks to COVID. But before that, I would use whatever computer was in the office that I was at, you know, at the time. So yeah. naturally, I didn't want to have to carry all that stuff. So I just, I'm kind of a Google Drive or OneDrive girl, and I just keep everything in there, and I can access it from wherever I am. So logistically, that makes things very easy. And like you're saying, that's kind of like bringing it home and bringing it with you all the time. And it has made life very easy to do that <laughs> compared to somebody that had their office full of books and physical stuff. I just tend to pull everything up electronically. Yeah, that is a very good point. Take everything home every night. That's that's not a bad suggestion at all. So very good. Anything else? Okay, just wanted to touch no. base on that a little bit. Great. So the ACE course pages on MyPeak, which I'm sure you have both scoped out by now. Uh, again, the website for MyPeak, and I don't know why this is coming up like it's a foul. I'll have to fix that when I send it to Kaylee here. Um, but that's not a foul. That's a website, my.penhighlands.edu. And you will go out to MyPeak. You will log on with the username and password provided to you by the ACE office. And then you will go to the ACE tab. And from there, you can view discipline-specific and course-specific information for your ACE courses. So, of course, if again, if there's anything on those pages that doesn't give you the information or the answer to your question that you need, 
please let me know. Again, my email address is on here, but you're certainly welcome to text or call me as well. So I just wanted to take a minute and go out briefly here to our ACE page. And this is our ACE page. I wanted to particularly focus on the fact that this is our main core ACE page, your landing page for ACE. But when you get out here, you will see enrollment dates over here in the right-hand corner of the page. Of course, a lot of these at this point have passed, but you will see that there are spring 21 course dates coming up here. So if you are planning to have an ACE class uh, that begins in the spring 2021 semester, your necessary dates are all here for you in terms of when the students have to apply, when they have to pay, when's the last day that they can withdraw, all of that stuff is there. Also on this landing page is information on the ACE application process process and information on credit limits and eligibility requirements. So you guys can always check that out too if you're interested. This is also where registration for courses can occur using that link. So that is all just on the main landing page. Once you are on this page, over on the left side of the page, since we're talking about business here, and this, I guess I could say accounting and business, but accounting is kind of under the blanket of business. So that is in this area as well. You will just click on the business folder and there is where you will find all of the discipline specific information for business. So you will see, you know, my name, my contact information is on here right at your fingertips. Um, once we are done with our meeting today, eventually this ACE page is going to be updated. So this was last year's agenda, but you will see that agenda that I showed you at the beginning of the meeting on here. And then the video, the video I'm recording this session. So this is again going to be updated to reflect this one. And then the handouts again Again, that are associated with the problem. So now this was all information from um, last year's annual discipline meeting, but again, it will be updated to reflect this year's annual discipline meeting. For new course orientation, so if you're teaching a course for the first time, then everything you would need to do for the course is over here on the right side of the page under the new course orientation area. Basically, you click on the course that you're planning to teach for the first time, and then you'll view the PowerPoint associated with that particular course. You'll obviously review the syllabus because it's very important that you meet those learning objectives. If there's any handouts available, some have more than others, you'll review those handouts. And then when you're done, you'll complete the evaluation by using this link, this ACE new course evaluation link here. And then at that point, you will be contacted by one of us, probably me, if it's a business course, to finalize that new course training. So again, that's only the first time that you're teaching a course. If you're teaching a course for the second, third time, whatever, then of course you've already completed those steps. But you still will probably want to visit the ACE page for the class that you're teaching just to be sure that nothing has changed in terms of the syllabus and the resource materials and the expectations associated with that course because we do from time to time, of course, tweak our courses to keep them current. So um, you can go to the courses from here. This is one way to get to your course pages. And the other way to get to the course pages is over here on the left side of the screen. Once you've entered the business area, you'll see a list of all of the business courses that we offer in the ACE program. Okay, so again, if you were teaching management principles, you'd come click on BUS 125. If you were teaching accounting principles one, you'd, you'd click on ACC 150 accounting principles one. So we have, these are all of your options. You've got accounting one, you've got intro to business, management principles, personal consumer finance, business law, principles of marketing, and then also macro and microeconomics. So those are all the courses that could potentially be taught in the ACE program for the business discipline. So I just want to point out what the inside of each of these pages looks like. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. I'm just going to pick a couple select ones to talk about. Uh, probably the, the most robust ones in this list is Accounting 1 and Intro to Business. So I'm going to focus on those for a minute. When I go into the Accounting 1 page, and this is kind of my baby, obviously, because I'm the accounting faculty member that does this. <laughs> but when you get in here, you'll see... Um, a syllabus area. So here's the accounting 150 syllabus area. And then here is the frequently asked questions document. And again, this answers a lot of the questions hopefully that you might have about teaching the course. There's an area below that 
with the QuickBooks Online curriculum and resources. And this is also the common assessment for the course. So a lot of times I've had instructors ask me, is the QuickBooks Online project required? It really is. I know that can be challenging uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic because of the internet, you know, accessibility and all of that stuff, but it would be best uh, and, it, and really it's required for ACE students to continue to participate in this curriculum if we can find a way for them to do so. So again, it's QuickBooks Online. There's really no way around completing it online. <laughs> so that's the, that's the only tedious part of the, the whole process with COVID, but so thus far, thus far, fingers crossed, I've had, I've had not too many issues with that. We've always been able to find a workaround for the students. Um, again, annual discipline training was there for that because that one really pertained a lot to the changes in the accounting class because previously we had an accounting principles class that was principles of accounting. It was ACC 110. It had different learning objectives than the new ACC 150 class. So I just like to point out to people that previously taught accounting that ACC 110 has been deleted and it is not the exact same thing. There are There is definitely overlap such as learning the accounting cycle, but the big difference is ACC 110, the old course used to cover payroll. This new course ACC 150 does not because we have a separate entire course on payroll accounting for our students now. And now we have incorporated QuickBooks Online training into ACC 150. So instead of the payroll component that used to be there, this is one of the main learning objectives of the course is to do QuickBooks Online because it is the number one small business accounting software program in the United States. So it makes sense that our students would know the, enough about it to be dangerous. And it does tend to overlap to other small business accounting software programs as well. So if they have experience with QuickBooks Online, they usually could make the leap to a different accounting software package if they needed to. So again, I talk a little bit about incorporating QuickBooks Online training into your class. Here is the case study itself, which is updated for the 2020-2021 academic year. So again, it's a pretty decent sizable unit and it is basically like a book almost combined with a project. So it teaches them in kind of a just-in-time learning format as they so they learn how to go about things and then they complete the steps. Here are final reports for you to use for grading purposes, but also for the students to use to kind of check their own work before telling you that they're ready for grading. And then I have reference guides in here and all of my little check your understanding homework quizzes that I use just in case you'd like to use those as well and the grading rubric for the project. So this is all the common assessment for ACC 150. And then I also included some sub supplementary materials such as the notes handouts that I give for the first four chapters and the comprehensive homework project that I have them do manually. Basically, it's on Connect, uh, which is McGraw's Hills product, but they still do everything by hand. So it doesn't do the work for them like a computerized system. It's a manual project. And then sample exams out here too for my faculty members teaching accounting. So if you teach accounting, this is a great resource for you. Check that out. If you were teaching Business 110, which is Introduction to Business, you will see a similar format out here. You'll see PowerPoint associated with that specific class. You'll see um, a syllabus and assessment information. So this is all common assessment information. So you'll see a paper grading rubric, suggested topics for the paper, a research paper guidelines, a project grading rubric, project guidelines, an example of the project. So you can see that there's a lot of stuff out here. Basically what we're trying to do, if we, kind of come back in here to my training here, if I can get into it, is I'm trying to stress this to all of my faculty members. So I'm trying to just say to everybody, remember, you have to meet the learning objectives for the course. So you don't have to use the exact same book that we use here at Pennsylvania Highlands, that isn't required. If you'd like to have a copy of our textbook, you can certainly get one complimentary, just reach out to the ACE office and ask Kaylee Malsey, you know, to give you, to get you a copy of the textbook that we utilize here at the college. Sometimes that can help a lot in terms of making sure that your content is robust and has enough rigor to go along with what we're covering here at the college so that you know that they align. Um, again, because sometimes, you know, the high school textbook 
folks are a little less robust in that area, but you can always double check that. And then you can always supplement where you need to supplement in certain areas. So that can happen as well. So we don't make you use the same textbook. If you want to, that's great. If you don't, you don't. And I understand that it's difficult and cross prohibitive in a lot of cases, you know, to request new textbooks for a classroom. So that's certainly why we make that determination and allow faculty to make that call. But again, all the learning objectives on the on the syllabus have to be covered at the college level. So sometimes, you know, um, we have occasionally had people say, well, you know, they, they're only in high school. And I get it that they're only in high school, but remember they're getting college credit for the class. So that's, it's really important that they have the college experience in terms of the material and the coverage and all of that stuff. The other thing that can be challenging is sometimes you have a class where you have ACE students enrolled in the class that are taking it for college credit. And then you have other students enrolled in the class that are only taking it for high school credit. I have that happen at multiple schools. And again, that's an understandable situation, but we have to make sure that we don't take the course content and water it down for the students that are getting college credit. They have to be taught at the college level. So just be very careful with that. Any questions so far? No. Okay. So common assessment, as I mentioned, there was that assessment piece that's shown on many of the ACE pages for the different classes. If you see an assessment piece on there, that's the common assessment. So you should be having all of your students complete those components of the course. If you don't see an assessment piece on the MyP page, check the syllabus because it probably has assessment pieces right on the syllabus for you to view. From time to time, our full-time faculty members that are in charge of those courses and tracking assessment for those courses are probably going to reach out to you for assessment data, um, such as, you know, uh, overall efficacy of the assignment and how effective it was and how the students fared on it. And they probably are going to request samples of coursework from time to time from you as well. For example, in my accounting class, I always ask for an A sample, a C sample, and an F sample. Now, granted, I may not get each of those samples. If everybody got an A, obviously you can't send me a C and an F sample, and that's okay. Um, you just send me three A samples in a case like that. But I try to get them to give me like three samples that are kind of representative of the range. And that is usually the case with a lot of the assessment pieces. So just keep an eye on your email. If you get a request for something like that, please try to supply it in a timely manner. We have a system called TrackDat that we use to track uh, the efficacy of all of our classes. So we go in and we say, okay, you know, what learning objective are we assessing this time around? And of course, we try to rotate them so that we're assessing all of our learning objectives on a regular basis. And, and we basically say, is this objective being met? Do we need to improve in a certain area? You know, whatever the case may be. And then we support that with actual data and samples of student work. So that is why we request that information from you because it's important in that process. And it's also important in ensuring that our high school classes are meeting the same standards and learning objectives that our college-based classes are doing. Any questions on assessment? So far, so good. Okay. Yeah. So basically that was everything that I really needed to cover with you guys today. Um, unless anybody has specific questions on course content or specific classes. Anything anybody can think of, Robin, Jeff, either of you? I don't have any questions. Robin, how about you? Anything? Uh, no, not really. I just have trouble getting kids to sign up to take the courses. And it's, like you said, I have kids that are just taking it for high school credit. And then I have like one kid that's taking it for Penn Highlands credit. Right. And so it's it's important that we keep that, you know, higher level for that person that's in the college class. But at the same time, you know, I think it's fair to say that you could make allowances for the students that are only taking it for high school credit. But what I just encourage my faculty to do is don't take the standards for Penn Highlands and lower the standards for the student that's the college enrolled student. Instead, either choose to have different standards for the students, which is fine, or raise the bar for the other students, whichever, you know, best meets your needs for your classroom. Yeah. 
yeah, I know it can be challenging, but you know, it's, it's just something that's really important because, you know, if you get college credit for a class, you really should be doing it at the college level and, and completing the assignments that you would complete at the college level, because, you know, hopefully my hope is that students that take classes at Pennsylvania Highlands may eventually decide to come here for a degree. And I would certainly want them to be prepared if they took a class at the high school level that was a prerequisite for another class or something along those lines. I would want them to be prepared for the second class. For example, if someone took ACC 150 in high school, I would want them to be prepared to take ACC 175, which is Accounting Principles 2 when they come here to Pennsylvania Highlands or any other educational institution that they transfer those credits to. Yeah, do you have any suggestions for recruiting kids to take the classes? Well, I think where I'm concerned on that is I would just really encourage them that it's very, very cost effective. I know that's really hard with the kids because, you know, at this point, they're not really the ones that are paying for things. You know, mom and dad are still taking care of that. But if you can just emphasize that it, it will save their parents money, it will give them a tremendous leg up. And it may, you know, seem like the finish line and finishing college is so far away, but it really is just a few short years, you know, after they graduate high school. So getting that leg up, getting that experience, getting those credits toward their degree and anything that they can do in high school to potentially lighten their load when they get to college, you know, that's, that's tremendous as well. It gives them more time to focus on their other classes. It gives them more time to focus on having a social life if we're ever allowed to have one again <laughs> it does it does yeah. all of that as well you know so i think that's the piece that i would emphasize to the students is the fact that you know you really are getting a leg up at a very decent price you're saving yourself money later you're getting um, experience with college level content you're getting much needed credits that easily transfer to other institutions and everything that you've transferred in toward your degree program is one less class that you have to take in a semester. So maybe instead of taking, you know, five or six classes in a semester, maybe you're down to only taking four or five classes in a semester. And that can really make a difference when you're in college and you're writing papers and you're trying to take tests and you're trying to digest all that information. If you can get that done, you know, a little at a time in high school, it could really be a tremendously positive thing for you when you get to college. So I think that would be my big selling point. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Hey Robin, and, do you uh, okay. do you guys at the school, do you have many other uh, ACE course offerings? We do, I don't even know what they all are, but we have some, and then we have some through Mount Aloysius, um, like the science and math, are uh -huh. through Mount Aloysius. We've had those for a long time, but I feel like maybe this is like something that's happening everywhere, but at Southern Huntington, all the kids that are going to college, not 80% of the kids going to college are going for some health related field. You know, they all want to go into science or like, you know, be nurses or physician's assistants or something like that. I do, I do I think there tends to be a trend. I'm into the business program. Yeah. Yeah. Because I teach web design too, and I'm trying to get kids to take my web design classes. I'm like, you know, there's more out there than just, you know, healthcare. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like they that's where they're going. <laughs> yeah, I do think it comes I in mean, ways. We need healthcare, but. Yeah. Oh yeah, we definitely do. <laughs> it it comes I mean, in some ways. People yeah. Just aren't cut. yeah. Some people yeah. aren't cut out for that. So yeah, I'm like definitely not cut out options. for high school. I'm not a healthcare person. You, you're not yeah, going to catch me wanting to my be daughter's a nurse. A nurse. Yeah, my yeah. daughter's a nurse, but no, not for me. So she didn't get it from you is what you're saying. <laughs> No, 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 definitely not. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not a nurse at all. That there's nothing in me that would be a nurse. Um, I I will take care of the paper and the in the medical billing office if I had to. But <laughs> beyond that, no, yeah. that's that's really not me. But I do think that you have you know a valid point that these kids. I think it's the kind of the birds of the feather mentality. I I do see that. Yeah. Like when you're you're in a group of friends they tend to want to stick together. And I think they kind of sometimes will cluster toward or gravitate toward a certain major. 
that doesn't always work out so well in, in translation to when they go to college. I have seen that um, with some people when I was a student in college, mm -hmm. even, you know, it's like, well, I'm going to be this major because my friends are this major. And, you know, you quickly find out that that is no way to choose a career <laughs> or a major. Yeah, you simply select true. it because your friends are going to be in your classes. That might be a way to select yeah. your high school classes. I don't even know if I'd suggest that, but it doesn't have the impact there that it would, you know, on your actual career. So I just try to encourage yeah. any, any young people people that I talk to, to really think about, you know, what do you want to do? Because if you think you want to go into the health field and you can't stand the sight of blood, that probably is not a good option for you, <laughs> you know, or if you're, yeah. if you're, I've had people tell me they were a germaphobe and then tell me in the next breath, they want to be, you know, a, a nurse. And I'm like, um, yeah, I don't think that's going to work so well. <laughs> you better start to overcome that if you want to take that career path. But, you know, I see that all the time. I've had people tell me they want to be a manager and then tell me they hate people. <laughs> I'm like, well, you're not in the right field. You probably want to rethink that, you know? So yeah, you you have to just kind of explain to them if, if it were me, I would just say, hey, you know, just remember, you don't want to pick your chosen career based on what your friends say. You want to just really, really do what you feel is fit for you and what your calling is and don't waste valuable time you know choosing a major to follow your friends you can still go to the same school and choose a different major you know and still remain connected so that's sometimes a good point anything else all right guys well you both know you can reach out to me anytime with questions and anybody watching this recording hopefully will know that they can reach out to me anytime with questions. Again, if there is something that you feel is missing from one of the ACE My Peak pages regarding assessment or, you know, any questions you might have on covering content, please let me know. I can try to track that information down for you and add it to the page or share it to you. And then again, if you are interested in getting a textbook of what we use here at the college, reach out to the ACE office and they'll help you out with that so that you can come ahead and kind of compare in or maybe even supplement your information in a few small areas that you feel you could use greater content. And that's it. Good luck. I hope you guys have a good semester and enjoy Thanksgiving. Thanks, Thanks Melissa, you too. too. Thanks. Have a great night, guys. See ya. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. bye.